From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. JC listed redefined properties continues to thrive amid a subdued environment as a result of its strategy of investing where it believes the best market opportunities lie, while also catering to the demands of tenants. Simone Lietke, who attended one of the company's investor site visits, gave us some more detail. During the investor site visit last month, Redefined Properties commercial asset manager Peter Stradom spoke to Engineering News about how, in a continuous attempt to regain investor confidence, this event forms part of its long-term rollout in terms of engagement, while also speaking to its investment strategy. We actually regularly host these events on an ongoing basis covering our various sectors, commercial, industrial, retail and then just general investor engagement. So it forms part of a, a long term rollout that we have um, with engagement of our investors, keeping them abreast of how we spend their money, where we invest, what we do and how Redefine plans to show continued growth um, for for what they're actually entrusting, or entrusting us with their money with. Um, in terms of the achievement is really retaining investor confidence. Redefine really needs to on an ongoing basis make sure that people are comfortable with what we do in order to ensure that they continue to invest their money with us um, going forward. In terms of Redefine's strategy on the commercial sector specifically, um, over the last few years we have endeavoured to rationalise um, our portfolio moving away from investing in secondary assets. So most of our investment goes towards um, A and P grade assets which is a pretty much exclusively the assets that you'll see today um, on the tour um, and making sure that our portfolio is high quality, uh, high value. So we're also looking to increase the net asset value um, average in the portfolio through bigger, higher value assets going forward in core central mode. He further elaborated on how redefines buildings in the Sanson and Rosebank nodes meet both the demands and the requirements of these areas as well as those of the people who use them. I'm going to start with Rosebank. Um, Rosebank has over the last few years shown very strong demand for P grade and A grade assets. The major appeal of the nodes is really the accessibility of transport. Um, it's a very pedestrianised node, so everything is very easily accessible um, at the doorstep. So what it does is um, it allows occupiers um, and the employees to really access all the amenities without spending long hours outside of the office. Um, and pretty much the redefined assets that we'll um, look at um, and where our exposure is in the node is in the centre of, of these development um, areas within Rosebank. Um, the building that we're in at the moment, Rosebank Towers, is less than 500 metres away from the Khao train. Um, premium grade asset, very efficient building designs. Um, we're going to have a walk across to Rosebank Link, was nearly completed at the end of last year. Um, the demand in the node has been attested through 100% occupancy in the building as we stand. Um, premium grade asset, it's 20 metres away from the Khao train access, so very easy access to public transport. Um, and Obviously the retail offering that you'll see in the building as well, this has become a really key feature um, in building design going forward, making sure that um, the, the day-to-day -day demands of people are met uh, in terms of accessibility to food, shopping, without need, the need to actually travel too far from their offices as it stands, which is what Rosebank really offers. Santon, Santon has always been the business hub of South Africa. Um, it, the exposure in Gauteng sits at just over 1.6 million square meters of space in Santon. Uh, Santon obviously offers as the centre hub to all the legal and finance fraternities as well as global head offices. Um, that demand hasn't really diminished, although the availability of space has. So, Although there is a, a bigger vacancy factor, the demand for premium grade assets, which is what Redefine endeavours to invest in, um, over time is, is still there. The vac although the vacancy factor in Santon sits at 16.7%, premium grade vacancy in the Santon note sits at 7 um, which is a, a key indicator of how de in demand premium grade space still is. So the two buildings we're going to look at are recently completed developments of ours, two Pibus as well as 155 West, and those are prime examples of P and A grade buildings in the right node and it attests on the vacancy factor, although they were majority majorly built on spec and two pipes already sitting at a 70% occupancy and 155 West sits at a 60% occupancy. Keeping the tough South African environment in mind, Stratum cautiously gave Engineering News some insights into some of the trends that Redefine has identified 
and whether or not he sees stabilisation on the cards for the sector. I think we have to be very cautious to call an improvement. I think there will be a lot more stability, absolutely, but the, the economic environment is seeing quite a lot of changes. So I think the commercial market is going to remain tough. Um, there's a lot more space available under offer. Um, it's going to be very difficult negotiating leases going forward but the right product in the right place is always going to let well. So I think the demand for us as landlords is going to make sure that our properties remain relevant, of good quality and our service offering is superior to everyone else in the market. Um, talking about trends specifically that also influence this is the availability of flexibility and flexible workspaces um, and talking about how we, we align our space and how we engage with flexible workspace companies to provide holistic solutions instead of just offer solutions um, and offering clients end-to-end -end solutions around flexible working, flexible time as well as amenities um, at their doorsteps. That's Creo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.